I was really inspired by Gustav Klimt's uh, floral field. I loved all the details and the texture and the colors and the simplicity of it. And I knew I wanted to transform that into some sort of spring project. The objective for this project, this is for my seven and eight year olds, was to draw two chicks in two different positions. Well, I always give them lots of different printouts of uh, chicks that they can look at. Um, they would choose two of these, preferably in different directions or chicks doing different things. Maybe one is sort of picking at the ground and the other is looking off into the distance. Then I would give them some scratch paper and I have them practice drawing. And these are some of the results from my kids' groups. Um, they were practicing observational drawing. I was really impressed with how well they were able to draw that chick. The first thing I told them actually, I said, hey, so we're not gonna draw a chick like this, are we? <laughs> and they immediately said, no way, we're not gonna draw that. I had them look very closely, observe, and they drew a chick really, really, really well. So they knew right off the back, that's not acceptable. Let's really use our power of observation. I'm always impressed with the results that I get when you ask them to look carefully. This is blue-gray paper. I've taped on the borders with my washi tape. And I'm just gonna start drawing out my chick. We're always breaking it down into basic shapes. So I see there's a head shape and then there's sort of an egg shape for the body. Um, we want a little space at the bottom because that's where our flowers are going. Uh, we want a lot of space at top because that's where our field is going to go. So the chick should be about this big. And I have them kind of map out before they draw roughly where their chick is going to go so that they know right from the get-go roughly where that, how much space that their, their picture is going to take up. I don't want them to draw too big or too small. So I have them think about that before they even put pencil down. I have them notice the beak is actually quite short and going right back from the beak that's the eye. Once they have their basic shapes I have them refine some of their some of their edges. They might darken the line a bit that they want to keep. Um, not a whole lot of detail right now. We're, we're painting this so we don't need a lot of detail. Uh, the feet, I have them notice that the feet are really kind of long toes. Three of them in the front and one little and a mini toe in the back. There's chick number one. Chick number two, let's put him in a different position. Again, starting with head and then body. Now his body's a little different shaped because the perspective on him is a little different. Thinking about scale too, if one chick is this size, the one right next to it should be roughly the same size. You know, you can't make the second chick all of a sudden much bigger. There's one leg, there's the other leg. I'm not gonna be too particular with my toes here. I have two palettes here. These are old palettes. Gouache can be reactivated with water. This was from a few days ago. Just added some extra water on top of my paints and they've reactivated, so I can reuse this. This is an, an even older palette from work I've been doing weeks ago. And I've saved it, put some water in it to reactivate it, and these are the paints I'm gonna use. So. It, I really didn't have to use any extra paint for this project. Maybe just a little bit extra blue and green because that's sort of the main color we're using in this project. We're going to do, I like to think of it as splotches of colors. You can see there's like splotches of different textures, different colors of greens and yellows and blues. That's what we're going for. So I would have the kids start with whatever color they want. You know, we're just doing blues and greens right now. Starting with your blues, and you're just gonna do, you're just gonna kind of splotch it around. And again, you can use your brush kind of like an X mark, splotch it around. I have them move around their paper. I mean, why, you know, why constantly change the color in your brush? If you have blue on your brush, use it up, move somewhere else in your painting, move around. Um, now I might switch up my color, and we're just kind of putting these splotches down around wherever, next to each other, near each other. We're going to some dark green. We're going and going. You want to avoid the birds right now. We're going to come back to those later. Ooh, I wanted to do a little yellow as well. And I have them mix as many colors as they want, never really cleaning out your brush in between. So now I've got a green yellow. I just added some green to my yellow. You can do blues and yellows. 
you can do two different greens together, two different blues together. It doesn't matter. You just want to get lots of splotches. So now I'm going to add in some white over top. My brush is a little dry. I want everything to be pretty soft and spring-like. So the color shouldn't be too intense right now. I really want that soft feel. So I'm kind of lightening up a little bit with my white some of my splotched colors. I'm creating tints. I'm allowing some of the colors to remain and you want these splotches distinct. It should look almost like um, a little bit abstract, a little bit impressionistic, very loose. And you'll just keep going until you've covered up the entire background all around your chicks. And that's it. This whole process takes, hmm, it might take the little guys a little longer just to get the hang of it, but it could take no more than a few minutes to do this. Just make sure all your edges are covered in your corners and you're done. And that is your floral background. Now let's do the chicks. For I might use a brush like this or a smaller brush like that. Now for the chick, we're going to start with our just a coat of yellow. So you're just going to do a base coat all around in yellow, the whole chick in yellow, nice creamy yellow. Um, you could probably avoid the legs, but I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in the legs too, because the legs do have a bit of yellow in them. Now what I love about gouache is that you can layer beautiful white on top. So now I'm going to tap in some white and I tell my kids, where do you think? First of all, I have pictures for them to look at. So they know, um, they can look at pictures and observe where the chick might have, might be a little fuzzier or whiter. But I also ask them, so where do you think the light might hit your bird? Where do you think he might have a little more reflections or highlights on him? And they usually know, oh, up on top or um, wherever he's kind of sticking out, maybe his behind over here, his back. And you're just going on top with some white and it's blending with the yellow underneath, creating a really nice creamy tinted texture. I don't want them to overwork it. They shouldn't really work it to death. Just put some white down and move on. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more in the wing, maybe the top of the wing. You want a lot of texture, so you're leaving a lot of that original yellow shining through, but you're adding some extra white texture on top. You can see how it's really nice and creamy and textured. And I like to have them leave a little edge here where the head meets the neck because that creates a bit of a shadowy look. There we go, and then we'll do the second one. Now I'm going to switch to my other palette. That's where I have my white. And I'm just going to tap in some white, maybe up here along his back. You're kind of just tapping it in. Tap, tap, tap. And leaving it kind of loose. This is kind of an impressionist style painting. We're going to add a bit of shadow. So you can see here that these chicks have a little tiny bit of orange. That would be the shadow on the chick. So we're going to take a little orange. Our paint is still wet. We're going to ask ourselves, where might there be a shadow? Down at the bottom, here, where the sun's not really shining on it. And we're just going to scrub in a little bit of orange. And it blends with your color. You don't want to overdo it. If that's too much, in my case, a little bit too much orange here, you can just tap in some more white and um, spread it around. You can kind of blend it out. You can tap in a little more yellow. You know, it's very forgiving. You can spread that color out. But I do want some areas that are a little bit shadowed. And I'm just kind of scrubbing my brush, scrubbing it, scrubbing it. Maybe here, uh, where else might he have a little shadow, maybe under his neck. You don't want to overdo it. Just enough to give him a little dimension. Always resorting back to white if things are getting too dark. There you go. Next one, same idea. Maybe he's got a little shadow down here under his, under his behind. 
Now while I have my orange, I'm going to use a very fine brush and I'll make his feet a little bit orange. I'm just going to pull, pull down the paint along his toes. I'm seeing his toes are not purely orange. There's a bit of brown in there. I do have a little brown here it's on my palette, so I'm adding a little brown. Now this is something you could do with colored pencil. In fact, I might go in and refine it a bit later with colored pencil to really get the edge, the contour right on the toes, because it's not easy with a brush. Okay, now we're gonna go in and do the beak. I, this looks really dark, but I know that I'm gonna go back in with a little orange. Remember the bottom of the beak is darker. Top of the beak is lighter, so I added a little white on my brush, and I'm just gonna tap in that white right along the top of my beak. And look how it gives that incredible highlight. Now I might put that same highlight on the top of my toes. And I have them look at these things. You know, where you got some white on your brush, where else might you have a little highlight? The top of your toes are probably lighter than the bottom of your toes. So whatever paint I have on my brush, I'm gonna use it up on this guy's beak. I might darken slightly the underside and I might lighten the top side. That's enough. Really, that's all you need. We're going to do the eyes and add a little detail with pencil. I'm just going give it, to give it a minute to dry. Now for the flowers. The flowers are pretty simple. Um, just like with Gustav Klimt, he did his flowers in patches. It's almost like patches of flowers. And I had the kids look outside uh, on the lawn, which is right out the window, and they could see that flowers, spring flowers, they grow in patches. So there might be a patch of little red flowers, and then a patch of yellow flowers, and a patch of purple flowers and blue flowers. So I had them think about that. I had them paint their flowers in patches. I also had them think very carefully about variety. Not all your flowers should be the same size. Um, some should be a little bigger, some smaller. And that they shouldn't be drawing flowers. They should be drawing dots or just you know tapping their brush and getting kind of a dotted effect. That's gonna make it look more natural because these flowers, really, they're small and we're looking at them from a distance. So we don't see a lot of detail. It's really just about tiny little dots of color. They're just finding little areas where they can put down dots. They're just tapping. But they're thinking in terms of patches of color. I also had them think, you know, be a little bit random. if You don't want a perfectly arranged patch of flowers. They're a little random. They should be a little bit random, kind of dot around. Once they've done one patch, take that same color and do another patch somewhere else. That way you're keeping that harmony and that balance. I also had them go a little heavier at the bottom because I wanted that visual weight. So we went a little heavier with flowers at the bottom. I had them add kind of a lot more down at the bottom, maybe even slightly bigger um, because they're closer to us, so maybe they appear slightly bigger. So I've got some blues. Now let's see what else I have. Let's do some purples. These ones might be a little bit bigger. And you want to leave a lot of space in between. You want to have a lot of open, grassy area as well. You don't want every square inch covered with patches of flowers. That's not going to look natural. We're really trying to showcase the, um, the beautiful, grassy background that we've painted. I also have them regularly go back in with their white and tint some of their flowers. It's all about tinting. It's all about using that white with gouache because that gives our flowers kind of that glow that we need. Without it, things start looking really dull. And since this is a spring project, we want things really bright. So now maybe I'm gonna go for some red flowers. I'm gonna bring that same red down here because I want to fill up that space at the bottom of my paper. See, I'm getting a little bigger with some of these. I want to have a little variety in the size. I don't want everything to be teeny tiny. I want some nice bigger piece, bigger flowers as well. 
That just makes it a lot more exciting to look at. I think I need a little something up here. I always tell my kids that whenever they're painting, um, they should always think about adding in something that's bold and white. Um, because white creates the visual rest. It allows your eyes to kind of take a rest. Um, especially when we're using lots and lots of colors. It's really important to leave some areas plain white. That's why having a few of these really bigger white flowers really allows your eyes to kind of find a place to rest amid all of the brightness and color. You can even put a little yellow dot inside of some of their bigger white flowers. And there you go. Now, do I feel that there's enough happening at the bottom of my paper? I feel like it could be a little bit darker. I might even have them tap in some more dark green down here. Not really like flowers, but just sort of creating a little shadow. See? Just kind of tapping in, dragging around a little bit of a dark color. Dark green, dark blue. Just something to darken up that bottom area. Really helps to create a sense of weight and shadow. It makes it look like our birds are standing firm on the ground. They're not flying in space, but they're actually firmly on the ground. Our chicks are dry, pretty much. The eyes, let's do the eyes. For that, I would give my kids a um, pigment marker, a permanent marker, and I would have them find that eye. I would have them locate the, where they had the eye, maybe they painted over it. They're just gonna draw it back in. You could use a regular marker for this as well. And then they just color it in. Um, and this is one way that they're able to get a really detailed eye without having to paint it. Um, I, I think it would look a little messy if they painted it. Now let's do this eye. Let's, let's see, it was about here. This one is slightly different. Maybe you're leaving a little edge of it uncolored so that it looks like a reflection. And then we're going to do the beak. So for the beak, maybe I would use a colored pencil. Um, any kind of dark color would work. See, got some dark colors here. Maybe I'll use this brown red. And I'm just going to go back over that beak and create that separation. I might even refine a little bit the contours here of the beak. The kids can decide if this is necessary or not. Some of them have pretty good control when, when painting. So now I'm using a dark brown, I think that looks good. Just helps me kind of uh, really give that beak a little dimension. I might even use a little colored pencil on the eye. Same thing with the, with the legs. I might go along the back of the leg with colored pencil. Maybe the bottom of the toes. I'm using brown right now. You could use black. You could use even a bit of this red, red brown. There's some texture in the legs too. They're almost like it's almost like a stripy texture sometimes on their on their toes. Almost like it's a little bit ribbed. So they can explore that. Again, have them look at photographs. We're only using it to add some detail and to do some texturizing. You know, as soon as they start coloring with it, it becomes a bit of a problem because then it doesn't look well uh, really good with the other media. So you just want to use it as a defining element, not like fully coloring. Now the last thing we might do is take a, this is just a gel pen. Um, you might put a little white dot in his eye for a light spot. You could use a gel pen for that, or you could use a Posca pen 
this is the the finer tip Posca pen. All you need is one little dot. So all done. Now we're just going to take away our tape. Again, this is washi tape, so it usually does not tear, and you have a really good edge. And this is your spring chick Gustav Klimt floral inspired project.